The Word of God is a seed containing the very life of God. It is His agent of transformation. As you receive these words in your heart with faith, that life is released into your spirit and your life receives a supernatural lifting. Join Apostle Joshua Selman as he brings you God's words with simplicity and power. Jesus, we love your name. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. All the praise. You're the beautiful one. You're the beautiful God. Hallelujah. In one minute, can you give him all the thanks for tonight? Just bless him. Bless him from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hold hands with someone close to you and let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two. For he will bless us. Hold hands with someone and pray. Prophesy. Pray in the spirit. like you to pray just one prayer and say Lord may my unbelief not stop anything that you are able to do in my life lift your voice and pray they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way please make sure you are praying don't look around pray from the depth of your heart we are believers. We are believers. We believe in your limitless anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, the hearing of faith and the working of miracles in my life, I receive that grace tonight. Can we pray? The hearing of faith that produces the working of miracles. Can you lift your voice and play? Please be serious. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith and the working of miracles. The hearing of faith. hallelujah hallelujah god bless you just squeeze the hand of someone left and right to mean good evening and then be seated please bless you hallelujah worship team god bless you let's honor our worship team awesome people awesome people most times we honor them and then we forget when I say honor the worship team, many of us just look at the vocalist and then you leave the instrumentalist out. I think these guys are brilliant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amazing. Beautiful ministration. Hallelujah. You're the beautiful God. The beautiful God will not create ugly lives. Are we together? Tonight, God is going to change our lives again. What I'm going to be teaching, I truly believe with all my heart that it will contribute in no small way to building our effectiveness in the kingdom. You know, these words come week in, week out, and um, they are tailor-made. They are 
first and foremost revealed by the spirit but also designed to build us very specifically so that we become very effective in the kingdom i want to talk tonight along the lines of kingdom advancement there are a few things that i think that the lord would have us know tonight and um the worship team just set the pace very powerfully with that how we love your name jesus you're the beautiful one we love your name God's coming back again. So how I love your name, Jesus, the beautiful one. I love your name. just sang it from my spirit it just came out like an arrow hallelujah the concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house we have um, dealt with different series at different points in time attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about and um, the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned and for those of us who are just learning um there are two dimensions you may want to write it down again there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement every time we talk about the advancement of god's kingdom it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject if you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement then it means you do not love god and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom 
by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of god is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men i want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by god's grace i think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of jesus christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but i think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of christ across the hearts of men so i want us to look at a few things that i believe will be very very important daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um this will be more of a study tonight i just want us to pray later on but um i really want us to have understanding i like us to read together it's projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness he says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in god's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um in honor of a, a 
a, a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do i have to pray in tongues well i just saw apostle praying in tongues and i think he's good for me that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tithe i think everybody who i know to be rich is tithing so i should just do it that's not enough conviction is very important in the kingdom you must have a a sense of personal persuasion it produces restful confidence so no matter how sacrificial the activities are your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of god we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the lord will help us tonight in jesus name I, I have been burdened, especially in recent times. Um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning. Are we together? the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of god all through scripture you see from the old testament to the new testament the lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turned back to him and i think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement this is a major part of kingdom advancement in fact sincerely speaking listen in order of priority kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men first before the systems 
So if we have industrialization, we have civilization as a, use of, as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom. And we have people going to hell. We have people who are not serious with God. You know that that is, that is, um, that is not balanced. Is that true? God desires first and foremost more than civilization, more than prosperity, more than education, more than, you know, people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. God wants the hearts of men, the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity. Altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again. And the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too. But many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others. So we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others. And most times we tell ourselves, I'm not a man of God. Are we together? I'm not a man of God. So during a corporate evangelism like we have it, we can walk around and talk to people. But as a personal revelation, that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer, as you'll be learning shortly, it is a responsibility. Listen, soul winning, establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer. It's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not. It's, it's, it's like breathing. It is part of the component of your spiritual existence. And if we are not taught and pushed into that point, then there will be no continuity. A time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things. Do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents? They loved God. They loved Jesus Christ. They kept the values of the kingdom. But they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of Christ to the heart of the children. So you can find a man and a wife, um, you know, his wife who loved God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son, has my daughter, has my friend, has my roommate, can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes, is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about god the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to jesus christ no we leave them to other people are we together now do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus, 
and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them how many children are taught about jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship look talking about jesus does not save men talking about him talking about spiritual things talking about rapture talking about heaven talking about grace talking about whatever it does not save men men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship so there are so many people around the body of christ but they are not saved and let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of god so much they know scriptures are we together they can talk they've done so many things that look spiritual and so they convince themselves that by those activities they are saved they are not saved at all do you know let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the bible says you must believe you can stand and you are joking you are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told and not be saved and go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell soul winning soul winning is not just saving people's souls soul winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy i, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established all through scripture we see that the lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years 
many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but God is still looking for people because there are very few people I'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of Christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives before I continue I want to ask you a very sincere question can you look at your life you who was or were and you who is now can you note a noticeable um, tangible transformation if you cannot find a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen praise the Lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before anyhow living after and you say it doesn't matter no it, it matters you are not born again it's as simple as that there must be some degree of priority the passion look let me tell you something when a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how Jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you are a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority not saying anything not doing anything I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making 
to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be intentionally committed. Listen, intentionally committed, not circumstantially committed. If it just so happens that I find a soul that needs Jesus and he says, sir, I want to be born again. Then you lead him to Christ. That's not evangelism. That's not evangelism. The same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job, there is no food. The same way people intentionally look for husband and wife. Someone comes and says, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner. You see how serious the person is? That's how serious you must also be with soul winning. See, this is not religion. There is a spirit, the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that. You see, the gospel when truly received and the power therein will, you will be too grateful to keep quiet. Find out people in the Bible who receive things from Jesus. Even when Jesus said, don't tell anybody, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman at Gadara, the Bible says he went to the Decapolis and brought the people. Remember the, the, that woman who married um, six men? And Jesus being the seventh man in her life. The Bible says she left her. She went to fetch water. But she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life. There's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have, should God at any point be second place in your life. That's what must happen to you first. You must experience it so that when you get someone born again, you know what the person should become like. When you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion, you know the job has not finished. You should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone, including myself, you look at your immediate family or your extended family, you will find people who you know are on their way to hell. It's a highway to hell. Are we together now? Yeah. I know that you hear people say this emotionally, just preaching evangelism. But I want to tell you something. I don't mean to scare you. But I want to seriously tell you, there is a real place called hell. There is a real place today like this called hell. Are we together? The Bible says, and books were open. Listen to me. Books were open. And another book was open, which was the book of life. Hear what the Bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says the bible says it is appointed unto man to die once listen carefully it says afterwards the judgment it didn't say after that a celebration after it is appointed unto man you see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is, that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life 
I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to. At in five minutes, not breathing, it becomes useless. Has it occurred to you? I can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and I'm gone. This body lies lifeless. You will wake it. You will pray on it. You will prophesy on it. You will pour oil on it. The body lies down lifeless. What does that tell you? It tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal. Listen, listen, listen. Seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive. So if I give somebody school fees, that's good. He's going to school. If you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus, and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away hmm. there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time I checked, which was many years ago, statistically, eight people die per second. How many people? From when Koinonia started till now, calculate. If we are still working by that, eight people. And part of all those people who died, some were tongue-talking Christians, some were pastors, some were prophets. Are we together now? They've all died. No matter what you think about them, see this life is brief. I am waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom. God has priorities and we must, we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings. I'm still going to talk about a few more things. But I have to press this as a foundation. So winning is not a suggestion. So winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no
Take it down, Mike. I want to sing a song. Don Moen's song. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay, turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and never after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life Every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured. Did you hear what I said? Every other thing in life, hear me please, every other thing in life, I don't care what it is, is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved. And then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, Apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry. But my concern, listen, my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life. Listen, as it is knowing that this person died in Christ. You can die in money. Where are you going? Mention it. You can die in education. Where are you going to? You can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you died in what? You can die in worry, it's still hell. You can die in stress, it's still hell. Please hear what I am saying. You see people dying all the time and we keep watching them. There are people today, every time you think of, you know right now, based on the Bible, except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know. I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind i'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? If you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy or cry in grief? What of your roommate? What of you? 
because there are people who will never take this thing seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for god does not mean you are saved that you have a christian name joshua jesus our salvation no 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 as we worship you let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free that's very important they need to come we need to participate in getting this is not adding members to a church listen listen now this is where i have a problem come when when we go for evangelism for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved i've gotten 200 other people saved in him are we together because this person now will take those values look how some of you a few of you that have really participated in soul winning look what has happened through your life to others i'll never forget one of our ladies years ago she might be streaming following right now and um her entire family they were not born again none of them was saved then she got born again and god granted her grace i think her younger brother also got born again and then eventually you know she kept pressing passionately and intentionally the mom now got born again it was left the father alone that man refused and said no way you will not get born again i know if you ask her what she wanted god to do in her family it's not to build a house it's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point she just wanted everyone to be saved i remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god said we just clap and hey, please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it i challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation 
Let's rush quickly. Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors. This is not the work of of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of god this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your right in christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if i buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car i return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but i i i give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when god gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege if you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we're going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of god is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of god is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now nah, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession 
if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say Kai, this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of God that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get deep behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they, they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him 
he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true god is my witness even five people would not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see i tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about this okay, get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you you've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh it's about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray shakata bakata lord i'm coming for koinonia i know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to cgc there are all kinds of things like their phone missing like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them so we pray we silence those spirits And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia. In answer to that prayer, the Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to faith let me tell you listen there are many of our loved ones i guarantee you from now to december if you will pray for them you'll be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you but one day god will take them to one meeting where one man of god is and before you know it the power of god will carry them in that meeting the next thing you just hear they'll tell you i've been filled with the holy spirit i'm two weeks old praying in tongues everybody say i will pray say i will intercede warfare prayers warfare prayers are not discussions listen warfare prayers are not prayers of petition right 
we have a teaching like that hopefully next year on prayer a series on prayer there is a difference between supplication there's a difference between petition warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption the name of jesus the blood of jesus the word of god these are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in christ over people over territories when we talk of warfare and intercession that's not the, that's one of the reasons listen listen hold on that's one of the reasons why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not just for you to feel anointed it's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare intense warfare do you know let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here you are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting god for and you direct your prayer there are you getting what i'm saying the bible i'll show you where this is the bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer the tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture so i'm praying for my family that's what is on my mind as i'm praying in tongues i know that this tongues is not for edification of my spirit this tongues is for warfare to that end yeah that's how to pray that's how to pray fire that produces results you lock yourself off your phone that's not the time to be pinging and praying you are not serious you pray with your heart See, let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round of father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you, if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit. Many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit. That's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you. Unfortunately, it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager i've had you the next thing the guy said can i take one week uh break i just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbal is there he's baffing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbal is to say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't hear die like it. and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit all this bragging we do in the body of christ will land us in trouble 
will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Rakata Prescadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity. It's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Kapata kata likatosh enkre to kata labakata seke teke 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 te reko to koto pakata labawa mata pras katai oh yes I am victorious ke poto shola ba 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 every unsafe person we tear down those walls we command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the lord we command it hallelujah please sit down first corinthians 6 verse 9 thank you david quickly first corinthians 16 verse 9 Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It will take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in, in network. There are, those, there, there are frequent programs. Those, you, you step into a package for those who are always calling. Many of us only call when there's trouble. It must become a habit. You must pray. You are lying down and you just roll. Just for waking up for that one minute, the devil hears it. And then you sleep again. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not safe. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobadaka. You pray. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up. Eh? Before you wake as you are waking up. The spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there. I know it looks like I'm sounding silly, but this is how victories are commanded. So you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically. So you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. Any church, listen, 
there are three departments now every department is important especially in koinonia but hear me i'm speaking to pastors there are three departments in any church and any ministry if the devil wants to destroy that ministry there are three departments number one the ministerial team strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter one the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them 1 verse 5 okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall you also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. Look at what they went through. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Last verse 11. Ye also helping together. How? That's why we were victorious. Ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of god there were times we were about facing death but ye also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession 
verse 19 he says for i know i wish we could read from 14 he says for i know that this shall turn to my what how through your i know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ next scripture isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who prayed jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of god to find expression let me give you two more scriptures romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because i, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to god for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first timothy 2 1 to 5 i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that god will save them the second way you participate in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at second timothy 4 verse 5 thank you jesus god is helping us matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog 
if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i'd like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach nine we're reading down that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thy heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved read on for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so it talks about salvation read what it says for the scripture saith whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity he says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures 
Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and Simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word I will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on rema chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray less those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please Pastor Alpha come and give 10,000 Pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practiced in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenets they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that When you read Acts chapter 4, don't turn there. Just write it down. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. The Bible says how that the early church, they had a culture. The Bible says there were people who sold their lands. There are people who sold certain things and brought the resources. It said none lacked among them. There was such flow of supplies. There was such flow of benevolence. Because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures 
la paroto sukri atabalana balana ba Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a It says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can I have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because I'm leading a ministry not at all I consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of God who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can I sit down I'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of God no way no way no way no way no way see I'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of God to vow certain vows I learned this I learned this attitude from David Biome is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you I want I'm, I'm not saying this I want to help you there are many of you 
when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher oh, please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts I cannot give God it's not pride it's the truth I will be wicked how much do I spend on eating please talk to me how much do I spend on eating if I'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and I'm giving God offering of, of 20 kobo am I stupid won't I sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of God make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the God of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man Dr. Paul Enenche gave the story one time I think he asked God to grant him grace he wanted to set up he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel and God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions do you know 100 percentage me 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man I show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we are going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture Matthew 27 please Matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how Satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse 4 for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb I'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly 
evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you verse 8 now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him ten then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taking counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say Jesus did not resurrect. Next verse. And saying, his disciples came by night and stole him away. They gave them money and said, go and preach. That should be the message. It's true, we know he has resurrected, but we use money to silence the gospel. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and we will secure you you won't lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear oh they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in house and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati He's paying musicians. Satan is still paying men to say Jesus is not alive. But there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth. It's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village. They are men and women. Look, let me tell you, they will supply financial resources beyond imagination. Do you know, when I see great ministries that I know are serving the Lord in truth, begging for money, begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we will shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary Oh, this is going to Destiny Makers International. This is going to Rema. This is going to this. This is going to Capro. This is going to this. This is going to this ministry. And you feel the joy and the excitement. And you tell the devil, I am paying to make sure your head is being stamped. Ah. Listen. And then Satan wants to kill you. The anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i place a lot of priority 
and I had to trace and I found out that they were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of God whether I knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance God's business and watch him defend you God will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of God or a man of God and just go and drop it there I'm giving you a big secret you have silent I don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in I show you one of the mysteries the house of God the house of God your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of God drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of God I, this is what I do oh, oh, oh. Jesus, victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. oh Jesus the greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you I've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision I don't know how many years maybe two three years ago I was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when I looked at it it was no longer a tree I saw a big the only way I can you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now i saw it like that it was a huge the eyes one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head two red eyes angry the tail was and not it was like a snake connected to it the tail was another creature and had its own life by itself and the creature was looking at me i was looking at it he was looking at me and this is what he told me he says so you think you can release financial blessings for god's people something like that and that was it i know these spirits they know me i've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because god already knows that you have vowed that 20 percent of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why satan frustrates people that's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank it's not about the exam does satan need your script no he's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there are you hearing what i'm saying yeah you make up your mind that you are going to start giving all of a sudden you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes listen i preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly 
audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the holy ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at cgc and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a there was a time ben Hinn was looking for over i think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as i live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250 thousand and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes say i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on, on on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, i think some of the in the, the the idp camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it david was a man who loved god he sat down one day and said how can i be in a palace and there is no house for god he said lord i know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however i cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you i will arise and build a house for you god said you have shed too much blood i won't allow you he said no problem i'm still not offended i will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see greed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came when i read the scripture i found out that the last treasure that jesus had was not very faithful and i said lord i suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer make me one make me your treasurer you know who a treasurer is the money is not your own but you pass it around there will always be a portion for you but you pass it around a distribution channel may god make someone hear that 
your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, media? Okay, please just turn it so that we hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity for the sake of thy house because of the house of the lord our god i will seek thy good give us an niv do you have niv if you don't that's all right niv says i will seek your prosperity so lord i'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself no brothers and sisters how many houses can you live in how many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. But the kingdom, but souls. If you like, buy any kind of designers, it's finite. It's finite. Do you know what made the rich man a fool? His wealth did not flow. His wealth stayed. Keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness. It's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your prosperity seek your good Romans chapter 10 I'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10 how then I'm rounding up now shall they call upon him whom they have not believed so you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off and how shall they believe of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank God for the means and the capacity. Please, just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now, there are people outside to pay. And we are stranded. Do you know what will happen to me? As anointed as I've preached, as much as you have been blessed, because of the financial pressure on me, I will be forced to do something else. After preaching such a powerful message on souls, I will now say, Sam, please come out. Pastor Alpha, come out. And now try to twist your hand because I have a budget to meet. There are many men of God we call money mongers. They are not money mongers. The pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick. So when you are blessed, you are here seated. There's light. The sound system is working well. Everything after service, you are going. There's security standing. Everything is paid for. You know, the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar 
shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together it's because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirit satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed their marriage will represent a continuity of the kingdom of god but the financial wherewithal is not there they love god but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of god they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this it's a cost that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment god did not give you that's an assignment god did not give anyone are you hearing what i'm saying my father is alive my mother is alive by the grace of god i say it in the open i bless them all the time and every time and they are happy i've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life i've had the privilege of of helping in ways little i have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came i've seen people move from scratch to where god will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing i don't care what you are doing i don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting god's time we are going to pray rise up on your feet victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh your life is changing oh, 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 oh victory belongs to jesus victory belongs sing it from your heart oh, 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 oh. voice in one minute and say lord for as long as there is breath in my nostrils your kingdom must advance lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray for as long as there is breath in my nostrils i'm a kingdom advancer i'm a kingdom advancer i pledge allegiance 
I rededicate my life. I rededicate my days. I rededicate my influence for the advancement of your kingdom. Victory belongs to Jesus. Are you praying? I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering for your kingdom, for your glory. Revelations 11 verse 15 We are praying very quickly We are rounding up now Please I want you to participate in the prayer Can you help us media is that possible Quickly please Revelations 11 15 That's the theme of koinonia It's part of the core scriptures The anchor scriptures of this ministry I want you to read it One to read and the seventh angel sounded and there were voices in heaven saying because of us hold on because of my giving because of my going because of my praying the kingdoms of this world is a prophecy that must happen have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever because of my seed he shall reign because of my going he shall reign I live listen the 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 what do they call it when you put on your phone just that thing that comes when you see mine it says a kingdom ambassador promoting God's agenda that is all I live for now if I am not doing that now there is no reason to live believe me the reason why I breathe now is to see the nations call him king of kings and I will do all it takes with the breath I have in life and in death to see that his glory is revealed I want you to pray and say father grace for warfare and intercession for souls grace for warfare and intercession for territories are you praying lift your voice and pray point number two father the courage and the zeal to talk to people about Jesus to invite them to the house of the Lord to follow up their establishment I receive it lift your voice and pray the harvest is wide the harvest is wide in Zaria the harvest is wide in your campuses the harvest is wide on the streets the harvest is wide among the old, among the young, among the children. The harvest is wide, but the laborers, intentional laborers are few. Lord, I will not be silent. Lord, I will not be silent. I make my roommates the next project. I make my roommates the next project. I make my colleague in office the next project. I make my father, my mother, the next project of salvation. I will talk to them about Jesus. They will not die and go to hell. Hallelujah. The last prayer point 
I want you to pray this passionately with all your heart and say father trust me with the resources of heaven and I vow that I will be your treasure on earth lift your voice and pray come on pray make a covenant with God Lord trust me supernatural resources trust me with the wealth of the kingdom trust me prosperity in the kingdom is not an achievement no you are trusted you are trusted yeah. hallelujah listen a few years ago the lord spoke to me and said to me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you i want you to pray and say lord the resources to fund your kingdom pass it through me lift your voice and pray god will answer it i assure you the kingdom is tied to it god will answer it I'm not talking salary. I'm not talking business. The mystery of divine supply. your hands in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of prayer warfare and supplication the grace that helps men travel for souls travel for territories to be opened receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace right now in the name of Jesus I release it upon you from today fresh grace for prayer in the name of Jesus I pray for you every spirit of timidity every lukewarm spirit that does not make God a priority in your life and doesn't make so winning a passion I tear that spirit from your life forever in the name of Jesus and I pray in the name of Jesus that beginning from now if you don't win souls it will be as if you have not eaten in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you because your heart is tied to funding the agenda of the kingdom I pray for you the grace that helps men to be wealthy the grace for wealth there is an anointing for it in the name that is above all names I pray for you may that mantle come on you right now I release upon you that grace let your financial life change right now let it change like day and night I prophesy to you wisdom strategy grace to walk in obedience the giving grace grace to love the house of God grace for kingdom investment the giving grace receive it in Jesus name I pray for you finally every delayed harvest from any giving you have given in the house of God but your harvest is being tied down I stand in the name of Jesus and I prophesy to that harvest so that you will have more to give I command it to come to you speedily I command your harvest speedily I command your harvest speedily you're here tonight outside everybody stand please no movement you are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord I tell you mantles are falling this thing worked in the spirit 
things are falling let's just let God do what he's doing but I'll make an altar call while that is happening there are people receiving grace this last prayer point I prayed struck a chord in the realm of the spirit there are people having things you are only a victim of what you do not have there are things that can come upon your life and change your life like day and night there are people here inside and outside while you heard me preach the Holy Ghost spoke to you and said the man of God is talking about you you need to make your ways right with Jesus our time is gone I do not want to cajole you but wherever you are you are saying man of God I love Jesus with all my heart and I want to make that decision right now I thought I was saved but now I'm realizing that I've never truly truly opened up my heart to Jesus or there are those who are saying man of God I just want to get my feet back many things have happened in my life I need to get back with Jesus you have one minute to do this wherever you are please leave your seat inside and outside rush out right now God bless you thank you for your courage God bless you Koinoni, are you celebrating them it's a sacrifice those outside I expect you to be running as you come I expect you to be running as you come please keep clapping for them they are coming Are my heart's desire and I long to worship. Keep coming, join them. If you are not sure you are saved, join them. You are not saved. Once you are not sure, make your way and come and assure yourself before God. coming now those of you in front thank you so much for coming lift your right hand and say this after me it's a very simple confession but then it will release supernatural power upon you if you believe say after me Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you that you are the son of God join them I believe that you died for me you rose again on the third day and you are alive for me I declare this night that you are my savior and you are my Lord from today and for the rest of my life I live for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus father this decision they have made let it be a lasting decision they have made a decision to be serious with you they have made a decision to commit their ways to you lord i pray by the power of the holy spirit that they will experience your multifaceted goodness in their lives i pray that not only will you experience the power of the holy spirit in your life you will also be so winners i plant in you the fire and the grace to take this evangelistic spirit to all and sundry everyone around you you will talk to them about Jesus I bless you with the blessings of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen congratulations thank you for your great decision as you rise up just follow the person waving his or her hand I cannot see okay there's a gentleman waving his hands just follow him congratulations they will welcome you and have your details